What's up, guys? Today, I want to talk about how to get great sounding podcast audio on a budget. There are a lot of different microphones and pieces of gear and software and plugins that you can spend an endless amount of money on, and they're great. They'll get great results, but you don't necessarily need to do that to get good audio. So instead of using professional gear, I'm going to show you how to apply pro-level techniques using budget gear and free plugins. So you can see you don't need to spend a huge amount of money to get good sound. You can do it on any budget. Before we get started, if you enjoy these videos and you want to support my my channel, I just started up a Patreon at patreon.com slash AXK. I'll be doing exclusive content plus live Q&As where I'll answer any of your audio questions as well as giveaways where you can get free gear, free software, and free sound effects. So if you want to do an even deeper dive into audio with me, suggest video topics that I can do and get your questions answered, head on over to the link in the description. Again, that's patreon.com slash AXK. All right, the first two things you need to know about getting great audio are more philosophies than anything else. Number one, it's all about about the quality of your source sound. If you're recording a great voice, it doesn't really matter as much what kind of gear you're using or what plugins you're using. The voice is going to be great, so the end result is going to be great too. However, if you're not recording a good voice or you have something wrong with your gear or you know there's some kind of problem coming up, it's really not going to be recorded very well in the first place. You can only make your recordings marginally better from there. So the source quality rule is my favorite thing ever. Start with a good sounding source and from there the rest is going to be much easier. The second thing is how I think about any audio tools that I'm going to use, whether it's microphones or preamps or interfaces or plugins or really anything else. Choosing a piece of gear or software is really about how much time that tool is going to save you so that you can spend more time and energy on creative decisions and less time solving technical problems or trying to get good sound out of something that doesn't sound good in the first place. For example, one of the most common EQs that you can find on Pro Mix stages is FabFilter's Pro Q. And that's not because it does anything better better or worse necessarily than any of the other sort of industry standard EQs out there. But when you're using an EQ thousands and thousands and thousands of times per day to solve the same kinds of issues in dialogue, well, you want something that's going to be fast and easy to use. So that might end up being worth the investment over just using a stock EQ, which again will sound great and you can get great results out of, but it's going to be a little bit more cumbersome to use in many cases. So again, it's just time versus energy spent on creative or technical issues. Same thing with microphones. If you listen to this TLM 103 that I've got, you can tell that just naturally and without any processing, it sounds bright, it sounds airy, it sounds open. The frequency response is really nice and controlled across the board, so it just naturally sounds good. That being said, brands like Neumann or DPA or Sheps are really not known for their entry-level budget price points, but by applying professional techniques to maybe lower budget gear, lower budget plugins, you can still get awesome results without having to break the bank. I'll show you what I mean with the Shure SM58 here, which is just a $100 dynamic microphone. It's got a cardioid pickup pattern, so it's nice and directional right in front of it. It's not breaking the bank and it's built like a tank. I'm also going to be using the M equalizer and M compressor from Melda Productions, which are totally free and can work in any software on any platform. So these techniques are accessible to anybody, no matter what you're using. Now, again, I like the sound of the Neumann, so I kind of want to emulate what it's doing using the Shure. But if I take a listen to the Shure Just Raw, obviously there's a really big difference here. The first thing that I'm going to do is get a little bit closer to the microphone so it picks up more the full body of my voice. The closer closer you are to a cardioid microphone, you get a little bit of what's called the proximity effect, where it kind of accentuates the low end a little bit. It sounds nice. It sounds kind of radio style, maybe trailer voiceover kind of style. I personally like how the proximity effect sounds on my voice, but if you want a little bit more of a conversational sound to your audio, you can always just back off the microphone slightly, and just having that little bit of extra space is going to feel a little bit more natural rather than that cinematic style. I've talked about the EQ techniques I'm going to use before, so if you want a deeper dive on that, check out the link above. But Basically, you can apply these techniques to any EQ that you prefer, including just free stock ones in Adobe Audition or DaVinci Resolve or whatever you happen to be using. The first thing I want to do is get rid of any frequencies that I'm not going to use. On the human voice, generally, it's anything above 14 to 15 kilohertz and anything below about 60 hertz. So I'm going to use the M equalizer to roll off or filter out any frequencies outside of that range. That way, as I continue processing my audio, I'm not including any frequencies that I just don't need or I'm never going to use. I'm narrowing 
narrowing things down to just the frequency spectrum that I really want to keep. The next thing I'm going to do is use a couple of bands of the M equalizer to find some resonant frequencies that are really unpleasant in my voice. The worst ones for my voice are generally in the 3 to 5 kilohertz range to start off with, but this is kind of variable depending on what voice you're working with. So you might find other frequencies that you like and you want to sweeten there, or you might find totally different ones that you want to take out. The basic idea here is you want to find these bad frequencies by amplifying a whole bunch until they're so annoying you can't stand them anymore. So you do that by taking one frequency band and narrowing the bandwidth a whole lot so it's only working on a very, very small set of frequencies. Then you can boost it up by anywhere between 6 and 10, maybe even 15 dB, and sweep it back and forth across your audio spectrum until you can hear something ringing or resonating a whole bunch. Once you've found that, all you have to do is notch that frequency down. Sometimes, again, even 10 or 15 dB, depending on the voice, and that'll clear the way for all the pleasant frequencies of your voice to cut through and mitigate all those unpleasant frequencies that are going to be fatiguing to the ear and after, you know, an hour and a half of listening to something, people are going to go, I hate this, why does it sound like this? Because the M equalizer has a bunch of different bands, I can do that with a few different frequencies and get better and more clear sounding audio as a result. And if you run out of frequency bands, you can always add another EQ and continue notching stuff if you need to. There's no real hard and fast rule about how many EQs you need to have on a piece of audio. That being said, I always try to err on the side of minimalism and do as few things as possible to get great sounding audio and rely on a good source recording rather than a whole bunch of processing. So I'll leave it at just two notched frequencies and I'll be able to sweeten and accentuate all of the other frequencies that I do like now that I've gotten the distracting ones out. So to do that, all I'm I'm going to do is grab a couple of other bands and I'm going to slightly exaggerate the top end frequencies because this microphone is naturally a little bit dark and I'm going to control the low end frequencies so that I don't get too much mud or boxiness. Generally mud and boxiness is around 300 to 500 hertz depending on the voice so again you can use that general sweeping kind of technique to find where the offensive frequencies are, tuck them down a little bit and then again to boost the frequencies at the top end that'll sound a little bit more natural and sweet and kind of crisp rather than dull. So the EQ is doing its job now. It's filtered out all the frequencies that I'm just never going to use, I don't even want to include, and it's shaped my voice into something that I think is better than where it started. Next, I want to control the levels of my voice, which I need to make a little bit more consistent for a better listening experience. You don't want to have your listeners turning volume knobs up and down the entire time that they're trying to listen to something. You want it to be more consistent and smooth. I can do that using a compressor, and the one I'm going to use here is, again, free. It's from Melda Productions. It's the M compressor. Now, not every compressor sounds the same. There are plenty that emulate old analog hardware, or they add a little bit of character or subtle changes in timbre to your sound, but every single one functions based off the same parameters. Those are threshold, ratio, attack, release, and makeup gain. Now I've done a deeper dive into this subject at the video link above, so check that out if you want more, but basically I'm going to work with all those parameters in tandem, and I'm going to make sure that the levels of my audio are more consistent using them. Since I'm working on a voice recording, the first thing I'm going to do is set my ratio somewhere around 3 to 1 or 4 to 1. Generally, that's the most natural sounding ratio, depending on where you set your threshold, and it's going to make for a much more consistent and, again, natural sounding voice. You don't want it to sound squashed with these compressors. Next, I'm going to dial down my threshold so it's only working on the loudest sections of my voice recording and leaving everything else alone. I want to aim for about 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction maximum, because, again, that's going to sound the most natural, it's going to sound the most organic. If you go too heavy-handed with this, it'll start sounding squashed, and it's going to be a little bit weird and people will kind of tune out. The attack and release parameters control how fast a compressor grabs down on audio that crosses that threshold and how fast it lets go of it once it crosses back down below. So I'm going to dial this in so it's a little bit quick on the attack and a little bit quick on the release, just again so it clamps down and lets go as naturally as possible. A lot of compressors don't have a knee parameter, but this one actually does, which is kind of cool for a free plug-in. So I'm going to set the knee shape to soft, and basically that's just going to keep this sounding as natural as possible. Again, I want transparency in this process, I don't want it to sound like a compressed signal. And finally, by nature of how a compressor works, you're reducing the overall level of your audio whenever you set that threshold and ratio. That gain reduction meter is telling you, hey, you're reducing sounds by up to 6 dB. So I'm going to use the makeup gain to turn that back up and keep the same level of energy in my sound rather than losing it just because I'm using this plugin. Now ordinarily my next step in voice processing is de-essing to get rid of a lot of sibilance, but because this microphone is a little bit darker 
and because I'm speaking into it from a slight angle, I'm not getting as much essing as I would with, say, speaking directly into the Neumann. So I'm not going to use a de in this instance, but you might want to consider it if you're sounding like you have a lot of sibilance in your recordings. So again, I've shaped the sound and timbre in my voice with my EQ, gotten rid of some frequencies I don't need, I've controlled the levels and made them more consistent with my compressor, now I can introduce a limiter that's going to tighten up the levels that much more, maximize the amount of volume I can get out of my voice, and it's going to dial in that kind of broadcast-ready professional sound to be able to use in any project. The principles of a limiter are exactly the same as a compressor. In fact, limiters are just really aggressive compressors. So instead of using a limiting plugin, I'm just going to use another M compressor from Melda Productions, and I'm going to turn it into a limiter by adjusting the ratio to be the maximum. That means anytime anything crosses a threshold that I set, it's going to be reduced down completely so it doesn't end up going over the level that I want it to. I'll use a fast attack and a fast release to make sure that anytime my audio goes over my threshold it gets clamped down on, it will never clip, it won't do anything to distort my audio buses. And again, because that's reducing the overall levels of my audio, I'll use my makeup gain to bring that back up and make sure that I'm retaining the same level of energy. Also, pretty much every software out there has a built-in limiter plugin, so if you want to use that instead, you can, and you can just make sure to dial down the ceiling of that limiter to maybe minus one or minus two dB and dialing down the threshold until you've got a nice full sounding podcast recording without going too far because again that's going to start pumping and sounding unnatural and doing really weird things. So once I've got settings that I like for my SM58 I can compare it again to my TLM 103 and as you can tell even though this is definitely higher quality gear with higher quality plugins being used on it there's really not that big of a difference you can get a lot out of budget gear and budget software. So I hope all that was helpful and I hope it showed you that it's not necessarily about what gear you're using or what plugins or software you have. It's more about your choices and the techniques you're using as a creative. If you enjoyed these videos, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, so come follow me over there. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com AXK. And as always, thanks for watching.